uh, the, the biggest threat to America is America itself. Um, you know, and that's pretty much what, what we're talking about here. There, there's no threat outside of our borders that's capable of doing fatal harm to the, to the United States. Uh, there's, there's terrorist groups that can give us pinpricks here and there, and it's ugly and it's messy, but it doesn't threaten our very being. Um, Russia does not threaten us. China does not threaten us. There's no, North Korea does not threaten us. There's, there's no nation that, 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 that provides this, this fundamental threat to, to our, to our, How about to Syria? our being. about Syria? Nobody. No. <laughs> <laughs> but the biggest threat to America is America itself because we need fear. And this is what I was talking about, the red meat. We need to have a boogeyman out there um, to, to, to ge generate the fear to justify the expenditures, um, to, 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 you know, take a look at our military spending. Um, you know, we, we spend more than the next, what, eight nations combined together. We keep talking about the threat from Russia, the threat from China, but their, their defense expenditures are minuscule compared to what we, what we put out there. Um, but to justify this, we need these existential threats to be, to be uh, promulgated. Um, and the, the other thing is anybody who dares challenge the conventional wisdom is denigrated. I don't think we're at the point right now where jackbooted thugs are going to kick down the door and, and drag. Now, they're going to beat up 71-year-old men or something like that. But, you know, by and large, I, I don't think we're at, a, you know, at the point where, where, where the police state is going to take over. But they can marginalize you in other ways. Um, how do you earn a living? I mean, if you're saying things that aren't in line with the corporate theme, how do you, how do you get the uh, $200 an hour contract with CNN? How do you get the $7,000 retainer with Fox News? You don't. If you're not speaking from dogma and, and, and reiterating what happened, you don't make a living. How do you get uh, you know, funding to do uh, research at the university level? If you're not playing the game, you don't get the money. And without the money, you wither and the thoughts die with you. Uh, you know, they don't have to put you in jail to silence you. They just have to cut off your ability to, to, to make a living. Um, but the, 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 the fact of the matter is, there, there's a growing movement out there, a social movement that's, that's responding not only to how we interact with the world, but how we interact with ourselves. Uh, and this is where the militarization of the American police uh, is, is, is such a huge problem. Um, you know, police have to be of the community, you know, by the community, for the community, but they're not. Police are brought in as being a counter to the community. Police are at war with the community. This is an extension of how America acts with the rest of the world, and this is a serious problem, because the second we have our police going to war with the people they're supposed to be serving and protecting, we have a fundamental uh, breakdown in what in what makes this nation, and, and that's the direction I think we're heading. And it's all about it, it's it, it, we're a nation of fear. Um, we we live we survive by promulgating threats, and then we have a economic, political, social machine that you know responds to these threats and, and this response empowers a certain class in American society today, empowers them economically, empowers them politically. And anybody or any group of people that, that, that poses, you know, a, a serious threat will be shut down. They'll be shut down by through isolation, sanctioning, <laughs> and then they'll be shut down through the application of, of, of police force, no fly zones, intervention. It's the same thing, the same formula that we use to shut down problems abroad, we used to shut down problems at home. Right now, it, it's, it's not systemic, so most Americans don't see this. Most Americans aren't affected by this. But the danger is when we allow the government, for instance, to change the laws on surveillance, Americans say, well, I've got nothing to hide. I, 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 I'm, not, I'm not doing anything wrong. I'm not communicating with ISIS. So what do I care if they do X, Y, and Z to, to find out these bad guys that are doing these bad things? The problem with the government is they never allow four corners to be drawn around a, uh, you know, a, a government power. Once you give the government a power to do X, it's not limited to person Y. You get the whole alphabet. And when you become a problem to the government, they will use the resources available to shut you down. And, that, and, and those, sometimes those resources are purely governmental. Sometimes there's a nexus between the government and non-government players. For instance, if you want to uh, go work a, in a think tank, and that think tank receives millions of dollars in government uh, you know, uh, funding, uh, the government will say, if you hire this person, we'll withdraw the funding. This person now is unemployable. That's how, the, that's how this, this works. And so 
I think we're at that point now where if we don't stop this momentum, we're heading in a direction where we are uh, a virtual military uh, or, or, or police state. Yeah.